Okay, this is actually the article that I was looking for whenever I was doing the two recent articles that I showed you that show the peopling of the Americas actually contain European people. And uh, it was from the same author, Willerslev, too. And so I want to go over this and uh, perhaps even the attached paper to it and just to be a more clarification to it. Uh, this really came out in late 2013, but it didn't get known, and it surely hasn't been publicized very well. Scientists have mapped the genome of a four-year-old boy who died in south-central Siberia, so Russia, and near Lake Bakal, 24,000 years ago. It is the oldest modern human genome sequence to date. Researchers report in the Journal of Nature, and we'll look at that here in just a moment after we see this. The results provide a window into the origins of Native Americans, whose ancestors crossed from Siberia into the New World during the last Ice Age. And we've always been taught that after the last Ice Age, there was a corridor that came down through. They've all but proven now that uh, there was a corridor before that. They suggest that about a third of Native American ancestry came from an ancient population related to Europeans. Analyzing the genes of present-day populations can only tell us so much about the past because traces of ancient movements have been overwritten too many times. You're going to see some of the figures here, and they show you a variety of them with the boy that was here and uh, a Venus figurine, even here, seen. So studying the DNA from ancient remains is becoming a powerful tool for disentangling the numerous waves of migration that produce the genetic patterns seen in people today. The burial of an upper Paleolithic Siberian boy, known as Malta boy, was discovered along with a numerous set of artifacts in the 1920s by Russian archaeologists that are near the village of Malta along the Belaya River, and it's again near Lake Bakal. With these remains of a young kid were all sorts of cultural items, one of which was a Venus figurine, lead researcher S.K. Willerslev from the University of Copenhagen told The Nature Podcast. These Venus figurines are found all the way west of this area into Europe. And I've shown you recently, uh, and even not so recently, but still I've shown you these Venus figurines a few times. And uh, one that I did recently was uh, the two-parter that showed these figurines and where all these cultures had this same figurine and how this lady had put these together and kind of made a poster out of the thing, if you'll remember, and it shows you that it goes all the way from Europe to Asia to up into Siberia leading over into the Americas. We haven't found the Venus figurines in the Americas, but we are. what we are finding is uh, other bodies now. There's been uh, two, and that's what I was referring to at the first, two separate finds that are showing these Eurasians actually in the Americas. And the question Willerslev had at the time was, did the mix happen before or after or yes, both? And I think we're seeing that it was uh, after and not even and later uh, both. But that's another discretion that's you know kind of searching but Dr. Willislevs and college and colleagues obtained a sample from the boy's arm bone arm bone excuse me extracted DNA and compared it with that of present day populations when we sequenced this genome something strange appeared he explained parts of the genome you will find today in Western Eurasians. 
Other parts of the genome you find today are in Native Americans and are unique today to Native Americans. I meaning that there's part of this DNA that's in that Eurasian that's unique to the Native American Indians that's no longer extant in the Eurasians. DNA from the boys chromosome, Y chromosome, and from the mitochondria DNA, which is like the cell's batteries, were types found today in a region encompassing Europe, West and Southern Asia, and even North Africa, but absent in Central Asia, East Asia, and the Americas. And what's strange about that, it shows you the ancient correlation of people from North Africa and Egypt in Europe, in Eurasia, and it doesn't seem to correlate to the Oriental people at all, is what they're referring to. The researchers estimate that 14 to 38 percent of the ancestry of Native Americans traces to a population like the one living in Malta 24,000 years ago, and so they were a large component in still what made up what we termed Amerindians. The most puzzling part of this finding was that the boys showed no clear affinities to the East Asian populations such as Chinese, Koreans, or Japanese. Today's Native Americans are most closely related to East Asians, so the scientists had to work out how the Malta boy could be related to the indigenous Americans, but not to East Asians and it looks like it would have been through a bypass. The most likely scenario, they argue, is that the population like the one living in Siberia 24,000 years ago mixed with the ancestors of East Asians at some point after the boy died, and that's how they started getting an admix to them. Native Americans are comp uh, composed of the meeting of two populations, an East Asian group and these Malta West Asian Eurasian populations said Dr. Willislev however it remains unclear where this mixing took place and again this same picture here is used in the other video this is the edge of a Lake, Lake Bacall area and I don't even think this is exactly the area that that they found it in uh, you know not necessarily that you would see the area in the picture but uh, Excitingly, they have found two remains in what we call Alaska heading over, and they are untouched. So it looks like not that in Siberia, but they have somebody very similar related to the Malta boy in the Americas. It could have happened in the old world, she says, or somewhere in Siberia, obviously. Or, in principle, it could have also happened in the New World. And, again, with the new information, it looks like it happened both and neither. And separated it first, and then a blend later. But there's a lot of conjecture to that, and uh, only a few skeletons. So we can't make a, a blanket over it yet, but it... it, it it's showing to really look like that. The most direct way to address this question would be to genome sequence some of the early skeletons from the Americas. If they already have the mixture of East Asians and the Malta, then we would know that it happened before that. Well, since this paper came out, we have had those two, and it says after, and a blend. The research could help explain some long-standing anomalies in the study of Native American origins. For example, some early American skeletons, such as the 9,000-year-old Kennewick man from Washington State, bear physical features that, according to some, are typical of Europeans and uh, unlike those of modern Native American groups or East Asians. And yeah, that's the guy that they show a picture of, and he looks like Jean-Luc Picard. And that kind of gives you a way 
of showing you at least somebody who's extremely admix or maybe even still previous to admix let's look one more statement they have on this this is the article they were talking about in nature magazine itself Upper Paleolithic Siberian genome reveals dual ancestry of Native Americans. Dual ancestry, and part of it is European. The origins of the first Americans remain contentious. Although Native Americans seem to be genetically most closely related to East Asians, there is no consensus with regard to specific Old World populations that they are closest to. Here we sequence the draft genome of an approximately 24,000 year old ind individual MA1 from Malta boy from Malta in South Siberia to an average death of 1x. To our knowledge this is the oldest anatomically modern genome reported to date. The MA1 mitochondrial genome belongs to the haplogroup U which also has been fi found at high frequency among Upper Paleolithic and Mesolithic European hunter-gatherers and the Y chromosome of MA1 is a basal to modern-day Western Eurasians and near the root of most Native American lineages and I think that shows a connection and correlation similarly we find autosomal evidence that MA1 is basal to modern-day Western Eurasians and genetically closer related to modern-day Native Americans with no close affinity to East Asians or what we would refer to Oriental people. This suggestion that populations related to contemporary Western Eurasians had more northeasterly distribu distribution 24,000 years ago than commonly thought. Well, I think I've shown you that there was a lot, and in fact, until the Mongols, things along that line, there were Caucasians all the way up through into Terran Basin mummies, and there are pyramids up there and everything, although it's been quite covered up here now. Furthermore, we estimate that 14 to 30 percent of Native American ancestry may originate through gene flow from that ancient population. This is likely to have occurred after the divergence of the Native American ancestors from East Asian ancestors, but before the diversification of Native American populations into the New World. Gene flow from the M1 lineage into Native American ancestors could explain why several crania from the first Americans have been reported as being morphologically characteristics that do not resemble those of East Asians and are more European in context. Sequencing of another South Central Siberian Anton, uh, uh, Afontova Gora dating to approximately 17,000 years ago revealed similar autosomal genetic signatures such as MA1 suggesting that the region was continuously occupied by humans throughout the last glacial maximum our findings reveal that West Eurasian genetic signatures in modern day Native Americans derive not only from post Columbian admixture uh, after the defining of the New World, as commonly thought, but also from mixed ancestry of the first Amerindians or the first Americans. So, in other words, they have found it before in. Amerindians and they've always blamed it on something that happened after colonialization and they're saying no 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 it's uh, something that comes well before that and this spread of 24 to 17,000 years ago of uh, these two sites show you a long-term occupation of the area and data deposits here uh, oh well this is just the information that you can go into and it's genetics and all kinds of but basically it it is GSE 50727 sequence read archive is SRP 0294640 
Sequence data for M1A and AG2 produced in this study are available for download through NCBI SRA Ascension number that I just gave you. Data from Illuminata in Lumina genotyping Illuminati. Analysis genetic in this study are available through the GEO series Ascension number and they've given this here and uh, let's see in addition to the above data and alignments for published modern genomes so you can look that up and, and correlate it. Uh, Dennis Sovin genome also and uh, Tia Yuan uh, individual and the two ancient genomes are also available in another place in Malta so they can show you both raw reads and alignments for the four modern genome sequence in this study are available for demographic research under data access agreement with EW. So and here's your references here they have. Um, I think this is exciting, uh, at least uh, for once. Um, I guess it's it's funny, but people for years have been saying things like this, and everybody calls it racist, and you're trying to whitewash history and all that BS. They always say whenever you find out something like Caucasians are involved, jealously. But what you find out whenever you look into genetics is something that you start to really not be able to deny in any way shape or form and it can show you the reality that people have been talking about since forever so the strange look of the different forms of Amerindians that we know of when you look at old pictures especially too and uh, you can see that there are variations on a theme there. They were not one monolithic society in any way, shape, or form for the Apache and the Hopi and all these different things. And you can see the interjection that caused that difference that's there. And it's quite possibility that the Amerindian population that came in isn't the exact same thing just a few thousand years later when a root comes in in its waves but a variation on a theme that's been adopted over time coming through in a couple of different waves that either reintegrated with each other some of them and others did not and so you can see how out of just those two you can get six different variations on a theme and then it can go from there anyhow guys like share and subscribe i just thought i'd share this with you and it's one more correlation and one more confirmation of this fact Peace.